I am so, so sorry to drop another video on yet another eye roll of a topic, but I think it's something that warrants discussion. It's utterly infuriating, but you have to remember that this is just another example of a certain handful of idiots on the internet getting upset at something ever so harmless, and I think it warrants discussion because of what it's caused. I think I've made it abundantly clear through a handful of videos on this channel where I stand on the topic of cringe culture and harassment, and yes, this falls in line with that very thing. I'm not the first person to talk about it and certainly not the last, but I still feel it's important to talk about what led to Joe Cat's departure from YouTube. As for Joe Cat, you may or may not be familiar with him and his content. He's a relatively larger creator at 1.16 million subscribers as of making this video. He's best known for a handful of videos from animation to tutorial type content, mostly Final Fantasy related and D&D related content, specifically a series called A Crap Guide to D&D or A Crap Guide to Final Fantasy. He's also made a handful of other animations mostly related to fantasy content, original characters, and internet culture. Most infamously, the video Joe Cat is most known for is a 36 second animation from 2021 called I Like Girls, a parody of Liz's I Like Boys. The animation is pretty nonsensical and quick. It's just Joe Cat praising the love of women of all sizes, big, tall, small, curvy, muscular, like literally everything while using video game women, cartoon women, and anime women as visuals, coming to the conclusion of, yeah, I just like girls. Wild girls to the wild girls. You got style girls, make them wild girls. Yeah, I just really like girls. As for my thoughts on the video, to be honest, I thought I wasn't familiar with the specific video and creator until I had heard about this controversy. I looked up the video and saw I had already watched it because of the red progress bar at the bottom. You see, I guess I watched it however many months or even years ago and just moved on with my life like a fucking normal person. Because why would we be here today if somebody somewhere didn't see flaws in this video to the point of harassing the creator? While seemingly harmless, the response to this video has been so asinine that years later, it's a heavy part of the reason Joe Cat left social media and gave up being a content creator in December 2023. Yes, the ongoing harassment from a video made several years ago has ramped up so bad that it made Joe Cat hit their breaking point. Oftentimes, when people start receiving warranted and slash or unwarranted hate, it might come from a specific community or a corner of the internet. However, in this case, hate came from many different sides of the online world, and ironically, opposite sides of the political spectrum as well. One common argument I've seen against this video is that it gives redditor vibes. Holy shit, so we're not tearing women down, but this can't be seen as just appreciating them. In this 36 second video, people are trying to hyperanalyze the underlying misogyny that just isn't there. That's the main argument I've seen. Some having issues with the perceived sexualization and objectification of women. I say that that's a bit fragile. This is clearly a message to uplift women while literally displaying women of every size and color. If anything, it's so clearly demonstrating body positivity, not there to tear anyone down. Another group of people leaning more into internet edge lords circulated this animation with the intention of tearing it down in the name of cringe culture. A lot of Twitter bullshit has happened concerning this, but honestly, when is Twitter not a main culprit? Others have speculated that people are using this as a way to harass a gender non-conforming dude who's uplifting women. Some speculate that this video was just used as a cover to go after a big creator who's heavily pro-LGBT. Just know, there have been people from all walks of life and all corners of the internet responsible for the harassment put Joe Cat's way, and that's not always the case in situations like these, which makes it so much more bizarre. I think it's best for context that I read the statement put out by Joe Cat, a statement in which he speaks on his journey as a content creator and the reasons for his intentions to quit. My name is Joe, and I've been making videos on YouTube for five years. I have a combined total of 200 videos and hundreds of hours of content. On October 6, 2020, I did a live stream of the early access release of Baldur's Gate 3. And during character creation, I did a bit where I briefly sang a gender-bent parody of Lizzo's Boys. It seemed to go over well with my audience and all of my friends. I typically do these kinds of bits for my live streams sometimes, 
I was also partly inspired by the source of where I first heard Lizzo's song, Hakeem Animation's video. Running the idea by my friends, who were all very encouraging and supportive of me, I decided it could be a fun project to animate the brief moment for my YouTube audience, who may miss or not be interested in my live streams. And so, on April 2nd of the following year, I finished and uploaded my I Like Girls video, and it got a universally positive response from my audience, my peers, and my partner. About a year later, it seemed to have reached outside its target audience, and ever since then, I have seen and received many assumptions about my character, my history, my beliefs, my relationship, and all those of my partner, as well as threats of violence to me and my family, doxing attempts, and mocking from even people I look up to and respect, all from a single 30 second video out of 200 other ones. Granted, a lot of this has been primarily on Twitter, where I could simply log off and ignore the haters, but no small amount has leaked into other parts of my regular day-to-day -day that is hard to ignore. Private DMs over Discord and Twitch, suspicious packages being sent to my family, but I have always kept quiet about it because speaking out about it publicly defending myself, any reaction to it would just encourage more, and be presented as my own fault as well. But that's the trade-off to do something like share the things I make and I'm proud of on the internet. Seeing as I'm writing this, it's probably an indicator that I'm just not cut out for it, and the best thing for everyone would be to stop and pursue something else. Despite being very grateful for what this job has done for me and my family, I'm simply not strong enough to keep doing this if it means having to accept this kind and amount of stress. Perhaps that makes me weak, but I've rarely ever thought otherwise. I never meant to make anyone upset, I only ever wanted to make things I was passionate about for fun. I never intended for this one video to really be all that much deeper than just a thing I wanted to do on a whim because I thought it could be fun. I never planned to have YouTube be my job, but people happened to like what I made so I thought it could be a good idea to make more of it and use it to pursue projects I've always wanted to make, as well as be the change in YouTube I wanted to see. I was inspired by the channels I watched growing up and the wonderful friends that have encouraged and inspired me to be who I am and make what I want. He concludes by saying he's not giving up making things, but he might just keep them to himself for the time being, and would still be continuing his charities. Jokad clarifies that this is a decision he's been thinking about for a long time, and he truly believes leaving is the best choice for him. Look, it's really easy to imagine shaking off hate or harassment or pretending it's not there, but it's not until you've spent time creating something, a video, art, or whatever, and then put it out into the world, and random strangers online use that as a reason to hate on you. I'm not sure if I've ever mentioned it on here, but the first video on my channel to gain traction was a video that heavily defended the general population of furries against alt-right rhetoric. I was still very new to video making and putting myself out there. At first I received a general amount of support until I started to see overwhelmingly negative comments. A wave of people were trying to take it to a more personal level by insulting my voice, insulting my avatar, and even telling me to game over myself. Now I understand that video had flaws, but upon reading some of the more hate-fueled comments, it felt like I swallowed my heart into my stomach. So yeah, I get it, it's easy to imagine setting those comments aside and ignoring them until it actually happens to you, and somehow you feel vulnerable even though you were the one who decided to put yourself out there in the first place. It's a lesson every creator has to overcome is understanding that hate is inevitably going to be sent your way. There are miserable people out there and they can foam at the mouths to tear you down because they're bored, because life has given them the short end of the stick, and they feel like they need to take it out on someone else, or maybe they're just hateful and spiteful people. But in this case, it's a little more complicated because the harassment transcended the online world. It's absolutely terrifying to think that making silly internet animations could lead to real life harassment of you, your friends, and family, and I think that after what's happened in both public and private over the last few years, Joe Cat deserves the peace of mind and a break from it all. But is it fair? Not at all. This is someone who enjoys creating art and content, and even stated he wanted to contribute to the change he wanted to see in YouTube. It's hard to watch good creators step away, real and 
genuine creators, especially when malicious creators who've actually done wrong fight tooth and nail every day to stay on this platform. I think something should be said for the fact that Joecat was a larger creator at over a million subscribers. I'm no large creator, but I am a longtime YouTube viewer and a suit observer. I see this mentality sometimes that larger creators should be able to take larger amounts of harassment and bullying for any number of reasons. They should be used to it, they make a lot of money and it's part of the job. They have so many people standing behind them. And while there may be some truth to some of those sentiments, the number floating next to your YouTube name doesn't make you any more or less human. I also think it's important to acknowledge that you aren't weak by not being able to handle online and real life harassment. I think that content creators do have to have a quality of resilience. It's that reason that some creative people never decide to put themselves out there simply for the sheer fear of hate. You can make videos on thrifting like giant blushies and someone is going to comment a slur. I think there's actually strength in being able to step aside and say, it's not for me anymore. Some people stay on this website and push through burnout and a lack of passion or harassment or whatever it is and wear themselves down mentally and emotionally. So being able to step out on your own terms just kind of reminds me of a cowboy with all his items packed onto his horse, riding out into the sunset and the unknown. If you're here now, thank you for staying and watching my video. I wasn't a regular viewer of Joe Cap, but I know what he did inspired others. He cared about his community, and it seems like he was such a sweet, genuine guy. I do wish him the best.